ABC Jeff Austin, the father himself, has more on this. Hey, Jeff, good morning. Hey, Matt, good morning. Who knew, right? You, you know it's one of the great joys in life, throwing your kids in the air, wrestling with them, tickling them. It's fun, and more importantly, tires them out. But now evidence is actually does even more than that. It helps them develop. After a long day of work, there's no better medicine than this. Todd Shearmeyer calls it tackle dad time. It ranges from a lot, from horseback riding to pillow fighting. We basically just dog pile, chase each other around. It's run and jump on top of dad as soon as he's on the floor. But not mom. Todd's wife, more of a spectator. He's down there being pretty rough with the children. So there's a part of me that's kind of like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I uh, sit back and watch and, and let him be, and I just, I just let it happen. Experts say, don't be too concerned. Get in there. It's one of the secrets to dad's success. Horseplay teaches boys and girls the lessons of life, like shaking things off, thinking fast, even independence. Hey, this Michigan doctor, a father of three, is such a fan, he wrote a book about it, The Art of Rough Housing, what may be a dying art. I think the two things that are really affecting play in rough housing specifically are uh, the screen time and video games that we see invading a lot of homes across the country, as well as an obsession with safety. People are, are, are too afraid of a skinned knee or a bruise. It is an opportune time for parents to, to cut the strings a little bit and let kids just be kids. According to one study, fathers are cutting those strings more often. Dads spend 35% of their parenting time playing, 29% for moms. Moms may say, look, we're busy doing all the work. I encourage them to play with each other. I definitely get down on the ground. We'll play cars and Barbies and, and trucks like that, but I, I'm pretty much more... Stay on the outskirts and kind of watch. And he'll drag them all over the house and, and wrestle them and tickle them and stuff. And I probably really seldom do that on my own without him here. Right, because let's be honest, moms are usually more nurturing. Of course, kids need that, but they need this too. So they're learning about the tricks of the trade of the world, right, and how difficult the world can be, but they're also doing it in a protected and a safe environment with someone they respect and someone they, they love and who loves them. And that's really important. And moms and dads are different, and I think what's useful is for kids to get the benefit of both. <laughs> in Todd's house, he's getting the kids out of their comfort zone and making memories. This is most likely what they're building on of their childhood of Cute. Of course, don't take it too far. Kids can get hurt, but experts say you have to know your children, and you can push the limits with them a little. Look, I've been doing it for years before I knew it officially helped you. Oh, there are my little girls, Skylar on top, Sloan on the bottom. Mainly, I just like when they're exhausted and, and can't move. It makes night-night much, much easier, as you well know, Matt. Uh, I do, Jeff. You're right. Jeff Rawson, thank you very much. Hal Runkel is a family therapist and author of Scream Free Parenting. Robin Silverman is a child and teen development specialist. Good morning to both of you. Hal, let me start with you. Have we been making too little of this horseplay that dads tend to do with their kids over the years? Well, I think we've been making a little too little of the unique contributions that fathers can make overall. In fact, Anne just said it. She thinks fathers are a little bit underrated. And part of the reason is, I think, we've wanted to so celebrate and honor what mothering can do. But I, I think, you know, celebrating fathers doesn't denigrate the contributions that mothers make. No, but, but the, but the you know, article fathers... gets pretty specific here, Hal. Let me read you something. Interactions are more rambunctious and physical between dads and kids. Dads are more likely to startle babies, laugh, play physical games, such as tossing them in the air. And that's believed to help kids develop self-regulatory skills. Does this make sense to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the great things that I think we should be teaching parents and doing ourselves is helping our kids learn to manage themselves. And when they have to kind of rough play, and it's not all nurturing, then they kind of sometimes have to defend themselves. They have to kind of kind of stand up for themselves. One of the great joys of my life is talking smack with my kids. My son's now 12, and we're playing basketball, and kind of we're bantering back and forth. And so it's not as much physical rough play anymore, except right. when on the court. But it is this sense of, you know what, uh, I'm challenging him to kind of stand up for himself. I do the same thing with my daughter as well. Let's get a female perspective on this. What do you think about this, Robin? Does this make sense to you? Absolutely. We want both moms and dads to be involved, and they have unique contributions to how a child develops.
They, here's what the article goes on to say about some other interactions. For example, the temper tantrum. A lot of parents walk into the dreaded temper tantrum with a game plan. Dads correct the child with strong words or distract them with humor. Moms try to reason with a child and use face-to-face -face interaction. Does that sound right to you? It sounds right, and if you're wondering which one works, it depends on the child, the situation. It, it always depends because something that works with one child may not work with another. And sometimes it's a combination of those of those contributions from mom and dad. Yeah, Hal, I think Robin makes a very good point. I mean, it's very important to have the contributions of both mom and dad. We conducted a very unscientific poll on our website, site, Who's the Better Parent, Mom or Dad. 59% came in at Team Mom, 41% for mm -hmm. Team Dad. That surprise you? Um... You know, here's the deal. In 1960, 17% of homes across America were single-parent homes. And in 2010, it's almost 47%. So a number of us have grown up, kind of the single mother is becoming more and more normal. The absent dad is uh, one of the tragedies, I think, that's happening right. overall. Yeah. And so it, it makes sense that people are going to say moms because, unfortunately, they've had more experience with moms as their primary parent. But I think that is changing now because there are fathers, like you and me, and and who are trying to kind of re-emphasize our own unique contributions. Exactly. And it doesn't make us better than mothers It just makes all. us different. It just makes us different. Hal, thank exactly. you very much. Exactly. Robin, thank you very much. So yep. going from horseplay with your kids to horseplay with Jim Carrey, who pulls up in the studio <laughs> to talk about his... Here he comes. <laughs> who pulls up to talk about his new movie, Mr. Popper's Penguins. We're back right after this. Come on, let's go.